For the sake of clarity, in this section, I've drawn the streamlines of the potential flow and the creeping flow uh, over a sphere. The first uh, row shows the streamlines with respect to a fixed observer, something similar to an Eulerian viewpoint. And the second row, it shows the differences between these two flows, uh, fluids more distinctly. There is a sketch with respect to a an observer which moves with the uh, sphere, something similar to the Lagrangian frame or the Lagrangian viewpoint. Uh, the coordinate here is attached to the moving body, but here the coordinate is fixed at the ground. The value of the dimensionless stream function or psi over u squared a, a is the, the radius of the sphere. It's shown over streamlines. Uh, you see we have a psi star, for example, the dimensionless uh, psi star equal to is 1. Uh, again, we have uh, psi star equal to 1 here. And uh, three different stream functions. Zero is the stream function of the stagnation point streamline, which is horizontal in both cases. You see the streamlines in potential flow are more compact and the distance between them is smaller than the distance between uh, similar streamlines in protecting the creeping flow. And here the streamlines are displaced further. But in the second uh, figure, which shows the streamlines with respect to a moving body, you see the difference. The differences are they are totally different. Here we have a circulating streamline. It means that uh, the sphere, when, it, when uh, the moving sphere pushes the fluid out of the way. So a fluid particle here is pushed away from the path of the sphere and uh, experiences a circulating path. But here the uh, sphere is uh, creeps inside the fluid, so the title of the creeping flow is meaningful here, uh, or the fluid is dragged by the body, or the, uh, the moving sphere drags uh, the fluid particle near itself with it during the motion, so this is the creeping-like uh, motion, but this is a circulating uh, motion which pushes the uh, fluid particle away from the path of the sphere. Another point here is about the kinematic symmetry, about the symmetry of the flow field. Both of them uh, possess up and down symmetry and fore and aft symmetry. Uh, but uh, here we have only the kinematic symmetry, but in the potential flow uh, we have the dynamic and uh, kinematic symmetry. It means that in the creeping flow, the kinematic parameters such as the velocity, streamlines, uh, and are symmetric ha or have uh, for and aft symmetry, but in potential flow, dynamic parameters such as the pressure, the most important dynamic parameter is the pressure, uh, is also uh, symmetric with respect to the vertical axis here. So uh, the pressure on both sides of the uh, sphere is, is the same, so the drag force is zero. This is the D'Alembert paradox. But here, the pressure here is positive. But uh, the pressure of the, uh, the back of the, the uh, sphere is negative. So the magnitude are equal, but the signs uh, are opposite. Uh, so the pressure uh, is not symmetric. So we have just the input in the creeping flow, we have flows, we have kinematic symmetry. But in potential flow, we have dynamic and kinematic symmetry. Also, the other uh, difference between these figures is about the magnitude of the velocity. In creeping flows, the magnitude of velocity everywhere is uh, smaller than the velocity of the upstream incoming flow, but in potential flow, uh, the velocity of the, the, of the uh, fluid in different points may be greater than the velocity of the incoming velocity. So here we have the fluid always is retarded, but in this case, in some places, the fluid can uh, be accelerated and the velocity can exceed the velocity of the incoming uh, fluid. 
And the other difference is about the effect of the sphere, which is extended up to here in a tripping flow, 10 times the diameter of the sphere around it. Uh, when the velocity of the fluid is 90% of the velocity of the incoming uh, fluid, the distance at which this occurs is about 10 times of the diameter of the... So, we have a great region around the sphere in creeping flow, which is affected from the motion of the sphere. But here, as you see, the streamlines are compact, and the effect of a sphere is in, in confined to a, a region near the or close to the sphere. Uh, also, we don't have the boundary layer here. Uh, we don't have the boundary layer in potential flow. Uh, the boundary layer is a concept which is uh, which appears in rotational flows. But uh, the, here we don't make it. Speaking about the boundary layer theory, in potential flow is meaningless. But in creeping flow, we have boundary layer because the flow is viscous. So uh, you can't uh, find the boundary layer here because the distance uh, over which the effect of the existence of this obstacle in the fluid penetrates is very huge. So the thickness of the boundary layer, the boundary layer is very thick.